All right, let's talk about Nmap some more, specifically related to target specification. So my sort of goal for this series is to have like short, digestible uh, sections of content covering the different Nmap options in kind of a hands-on way. So there's going to be demonstrations, there's going to be sort of theoretical talks as well, but everything I'm going to be covering is something that can be found in the Nmap uh, man pages. So if we run Nmap tech H, for example, well, you're going to get a, a big output here of basically everything that you need to know about Nmap, all the different options, all the different arguments, the flags, everything uh, is all sort of laid out in this manual here. Or if you just run man for manual, uh, nmap, you're going to get the entire nmap manual or the nmap reference guide. And uh, again, this is going to contain everything you need to know. But my goal for this series is to basically break down all of that information and sort of put it together in a more hands-on and interactive way. So again, the first section we need to talk about when we want to run an nmap scan is target specification. When you think about target specification, that's referring to basically the ways in which you specify the hosts or the networks that you want to scan basically your targets. And you know, that's sort of the first crucial option to think about before you even start deciding what types of scans to perform, what options to use, for example. You know, having this proper target specification is gonna be critical for us uh, in order to get accurate and efficient results with Nmap scanning. And that's for a couple different reasons, you know. First being, we, we wanna ensure we're only scanning what's in the scope. You know, if you think about this as a penetration test or a security assessment, you know, we're gonna have a list of targets that are in scope and everything outside of that, well, we shouldn't be touching. We shouldn't be doing any active reconnaissance on those hosts. But the second reason is sort of strategic in a way. Uh, you know, you want to think about efficiency with scanning. So you can think about certain strategies to save time. You know, we want to cast sort of a wide net and, and figure out which hosts are up, which hosts are listening. And then we can sort of drill our way down into what's most important, especially in these time limited scenarios. You know, in a pen test where you only have a certain window to perform your actual testing on. Think about the OSCP exam, for example. You want to be efficient as possible with your time and with your scan so you're not waiting around for things to finish you know, figure out open ports and then sort of work your way with more enumeration, you know, do your OS detection once you know which hosts are up and listening. You know, if you're running a heavy verbose and script filled scan on every IP address on a large subnet, well, that's going to take a lot of time and you might not need to waste your time on that if you already know which hosts are up and listening. So when we think about target specification, uh, it can sort of be specified in five common ways with Nmap. So you can specify more than one IP address or range to scan, which I'll show in a second. There's also host names. So, you know, think about DNS, internal or external DNS servers. You can specify one or more host host names to scan as well. Uh, there's also CIDR notation. So when you think about subnets, you can specify a specific network using that CIDR notation. So like a slash 24 for a class C, for example, which I'll get into. File input. So you can specify a file containing a list of hosts to scan and Nmap will sort of iterate through that file, each line of that file and scan each host. And then there's exclusion. So, uh, you know, if you specify a IP address range, well, you can exclude specific hosts or networks from that scan. So let's take a hands-on approach here and actually go through each of these options we have for target specification. So first, let me just grab my IP address, my internal IP, just by running ifconfig. So you can see we're 10.0.2.4. So that's what I'll use basically for this first example. Let's just scan a single IP address. Let's scan our own. So to do that, we just specify nmap, and then we're going to just put our IP address. And then we're not going to get into any other options for now. We're just going to talk about target specification. So let's hit enter on that to start the scan. You can see it returned right away. You know, there's nothing listening. There's no open ports on my machine right now. So that's obviously why you can see here, the Nmap scan is finished. There's one IP address up, which is our machine, but there were no found open ports. Well, let's sort of see what else is on this network. So if we go back to ifconfig, you can see the subnet mask here. Well, that's a slash 24 or a class C network. So let's sort of run that CIDR notation in our Nmap scan to scan the whole subnet. So same thing, let's go back to our nmap command here. We'll change this to a zero because we're specifying the entire range of the subnet. And then we'll just give it slash 24 and let's see what happens. So obviously a lot more results now. Uh, you can see here at the bottom, there were 256 IP addresses scanned, which makes sense because we sort of specified that slash 24 subnet with that CIDR notation. You can see five hosts were up, but let's look at the results here. So you can see we're sort of getting a result for each uh, host that was found up. So you can see this first one here, this is us. There was nothing found. But you can see this 10.0.2.5, well, we have a bunch of open ports here. You know, we have SSH, we have simple mail transfer protocol, a bunch of other things. So POP3, so more email stuff, uh, IMAP as well. Um, scrolling down more, we have 10.0.2.6, and it looks like we just have a web server open on this port or on this host. Dot .25 here also has a bunch of stuff open. So we have SSH, looks like another web server. And then some more uh, seemingly specific services here, which uh, sound very intriguing to, to, to dig into if we were doing an actual penetration test. But again, we're just sort of going through target specification for now, but we will get into that later. 
So that was a way to scan a range of IPs using the CIDR notation, but we can also specify the range in a different way. So if we go back to our Nmap scan here, instead of the CIDR notation here, I'm just gonna do 10.0.2.1, and then I wanna scan all the way up to 10.0.2.13, for example. Well, because we're in a class C subnet, all I have to do is just hit a dash here and then 13. So if this makes sense, you can see we're gonna be scanning this IP. We're gonna scan dot two, dot three, dot four, all the way up to 13. We're just sort of specifying the last octet here in the IP address. So if I hit run on this, if you remember from last time when we scanned the whole subnet range, we got a result for 10.0.2.15. So in theory, if we run this, we're pretty much gonna get the same results excluding that uh, 10.0.2.15 host. So let's try that. And there you go, you can see four hosts were up this time, and we're not seeing that 10.0.2.15. What about domains again? So we sort of covered this in the last video, but if we just run nmap scanme.nmap.org. So again, we're sort of using the domain name here instead of an IP address. That's perfectly fine as long as it's routable, as long as we can get to it. And in this case, we're going to be going over the internet. So it might take a bit longer, again, because we're going over the internet, but let's see what happens. And there we go. So you can see we have SSH open, HTTP. And again, it was able to find that because we specified the domain name. We were able to find a route to that host, and you can see we're getting the results here. You know, the same thing would work if we were in an internal network that had a DNS server and we had internal domains that we were using. Same sort of thing can apply. So here's kind of a weird one. You can scan random IP addresses with Nmap, and that's going to be with I capital R. And then we just specify how many. You know, if we just put 10 here, and then we'll get into ports later, but if I just put TACP22, now, if I run this, we're basically going to scan for 10 random IP addresses uh, to see if they have SSH open. So this is kind of a weird command, like I said. This, these are going to be completely random IP addresses. You know, they might not be assigned to any specific network. Um, they could be public IP addresses that are routable over the internet, or they could be private IP addresses. But again, this is kind of something you don't really want to do unless you want to get IP blocked. And again, you think about having authorization to test. You know, th these are going to be random IPs. I don't have authorization to test. I'm not going to run this. But we talked about you could scan from a file. So how does that work? Well, let's just make a file here. We'll call this targets.txt. You can see I just populated this with, you know, four random IP addresses here. I believe we saw these two were up, so we should get a result for these two. So I'm just gonna close that and save. So how do we do this? Let's run nmap and then tack I and then capital L. And then with a space, we're just going to specify the name of our file. And again, it's going to loop through or iterate over each of those lines in the file and scan each one. And there you go, you can see two hosts were up, like we mentioned. Uh, we have the uh, 10.0.2.5, which was in the file, and then we have 10.0.2.15. So that's obviously a very useful way to specify targets. You know, you think about having a list of IP addresses on a pen test, for example. Well, this is a great and easy way to specify those targets. Now, what if we wanted to exclude a target? You know, think about if we're scanning a subnet range, for example, but there were specific targets that we didn't want to include in our scan. You know, maybe our scope was a whole subnet, aside from, you know, one or two IP addresses. Well, we don't really have to work around that. We can sort of specify the subnet and then use the exclude option to exclude those specific hosts. So let's do that now. Let's run nmap 10.0.2.0 slash 24. So we're going to scan our whole subnet now. And let's say that 10.0.2.15 was out of scope. Well, we can just do two dashes here, type exclude, and then just specify 10.0.2.15. Now, if we run this, we're going to get the same result that we did when we scanned the whole subnet, but this IP address is going to be excluded. Now you can see four hosts are up and we're not getting that 10.0.2.15 uh, IP address or that host in this scan. Now I guess the last thing I'll show here is that you can actually specify IPv6 uh, IP addresses in your scan. You know, that internet protocol version 6. Well, we can do that just with the TAC6. So let's run nmap again. We're going to give it TAC6 to specify that we're going to be using IPv6 addresses. And then we can just provide an IPv6 address. I don't really have one on my network, but here's an example one we can just run. And you can see we're not getting a host up because, you know, that doesn't exist on my network. But I just wanted to show that it's possible with Nmap. And you can also exclude IPv6 addresses with that same tax 6 So that pretty much covers it for this section. Hopefully it wasn't too long. You know, we're going to start getting into host discovery, different scan techniques and scan types, ports and services and such. But again, my goal here is to sort of build upon each section, you know, and then sort of by the end, we'll be running a fully defined Nmap scan and then discussing, you know, effective scanning strategies, firewall evasion, fun stuff like that. So I hope you stay tuned and thanks again. Thanks as always for watching.